I have been asking a few folks around that I love testing CPU coolers so send them all my way and they did. Four of them. So I'm going to compare these two beautiful looking AIOs first uh, which are by Thermaltic and let's see if they do take in any thermals or not. Mm. Hey everyone, Mukul here. So the thermal take TH240 and TH360 uh, which I have here are in white and I must admit I like the paint job quality on the components here. It's pretty good and I didn't find any non-white spotting anywhere. The fins on the radiators were clean and nothing was bent on both the 240 and the 360mm radiator units I received. Well, I'm pretty sure some of you may already know that I'm not someone who puts any sort of effort in beautifying my PC. But as I stared into the white soul of this white AIO, I puked a lot of white admiration over it. Admiration. Except for the fan screws, everything else was in pure white. The fans are pretty lightweight and the same fan is on the 240 and the 360mm AIO. The white paint finish on the wires is pretty good too, but they are so freaking long that sorting and managing them at the end of the installation is surely going to take some time and effort. But anyway, I do love the fact that the wires are pretty long. That's what she said. Well, it would have been definitely better if the higher price 360mm AIO had better fans on it, but meh. The tubes of the 360mm radiator felt more flexible than the 240mm radiator. So in comparison, I loved bending the hell out of the 360mm rad. The sleeves on top of these tubes are definitely of good quality. The pump has a nice clean design with these four corners cut uh, with a white filler on them. And of course the pumps have some RGB play over them too, which mostly is the Thermal Takes logo uh, with Thermal Take written under it. Uh, I mean, when mentioned would have been enough, but here you go anyway. On the radiator, there's a hose uh, through which you can flush out the liquid if you want to change it after a few years or so. Most of the Intel and AMD sockets were supplied and the AMD Intel backplate is the same. Well, I do like this convenience where it helps a user to not get confused between the many uh, multiple brackets or stuff they see when they open up any of the CPU coolers and having one less thing to worry about just helps. The pump brackets are two though, of course one is for AMD and one is for Intel and it's of black color but I guess it's fine as it will anyway hide with the layout of most of the black motherboards uh, unless and until you have a white motherboard I guess then also you won't be able to nitpick it. And I have heard from Thermaltake guys here that the next patch which will come in the January of 2022, well it will have the LGA 1700 socket inside. The copper base plate is approximately 5.6 by 5.6 cm and is almost completely flat. The AIOs support a variety of motherboards for their homogeneous uh, light sync software. But even if your motherboard doesn't support any addressable RGB header, you can still play with the lighting on the AIOs with its own supplied RGB controller, which is a good thing. I mean, if you're buying one of these AIOs, I'm pretty sure your motherboard is going to have an addressable RGB uh, header on it. And there's also a single page manual too, which is printed on both the sides of the page and has almost absolutely no text on it, which is something I personally definitely missed. Because both of these AIOs are from the same family, uh, the installation process is going to be similar on both of them. So installing the AIO on the Ryzen 3900X did take some time and effort for sure. The installation process is definitely lengthier if you have ever tried installing AIOs which uh, use Acetec pumps on them and in comparison this might just take slightly more time. So if you are also installing on an AMD chip then make sure that on the backplate the AMD written text goes inside and hence the text which says Intel will be visible on the top. So for an Intel CPU this goes the other way around. The screws are labeled in the manual but without any text you have to make good use of your picture skills when you were a kid. And some text is also there on the packaging they came in. So just follow that carefully and don't touch this part for God's sake. There's a contact pad which needs to go between the backplate and the motherboard. And because it has sticky properties, if you ever decide to swap from an AMD to an Intel CPU, this might or might not stick properly and the box only came with one of them. And I really appreciate the fact that uh, Thermal Take decided to put some extra washers inside the packaging because I lost one somewhere inside my case and there was an extra washer and I was like, thank God. Well, these long screws will go in with their washers and on the other side, these four housings, which are plastic, uh, will go on top of them. They kind of snap to these screws, so try both the directions until you feel that snappy kind of feel as you put them in. After that, you might have to take out the Intel bracket from the pump and snap in the AMD bracket if that's the case with you too. And after applying some thermal grease on top of the processor, uh, in this case, I used the default thermal grease which came with the AIO. 
Well, after that, you just put the pump on top and then screw the four screws alternatively till all of them are tight enough to the extent that there is no play on the pump. Well, then install the fans on the radiator in either of the push or pull configuration, whichever suits your case. And yep, there is no way to rotate the pump. So unless you are okay with installing the pump this way only, then you might need to adjust to looking at some upside down text on the AIO, which is something which I can't bear to see at all throughout my daily life. Well, the fans will easily connect with each other uh, alongside with the pump in a daisy chain manner for powering the RGB element of the AIO. You can either use the E or F cable and put the other end on one of the addressable 5 volt RGB headers on your motherboard. I use the E label wire which the manual says supports the ASUS motherboard for the RGB sync stuff. So at least they put the effort of labeling these cables with a single letter on them. Or you can use the supplied RGB controller if your motherboard doesn't have any ARGB header on it. And after that, I daisy chained the power connector for the fans and put them on a four pin uh, chassis connector on the motherboard. And then the other one connector from the pump will go in the AIO pump header or, or the CPU fan header on your motherboard. I mean, choose wisely, even when both of them will do the same thing for the pump. Connecting the headers across the fans and the pump won't take much time if you are able to figure out the almost completely text-free manual. So yeah, by the end of installing all of this, uh, it did feel quite smooth and fine i mean except for one or two things and the overall installation process was quite easy and to the point but then suddenly i realized that i have to now sort all those long cables which i was kind of admiring earlier but now i hate the fact that they are so long that i would definitely need to put in some effort and time in managing all of that but yeah of course the longer files will give you at least the flexibility if there are some of the headers which you want to access uh, which are on the bottom of your motherboard then yeah, the longer vials will reach there easily because they are long. The lighting on the fans and the pump look pretty nice on these white AIOs that it almost convinced me to buy one for myself. But I had to stop myself because that would be a waste of money because my current CPU cooler works just fine. The lighting on the fan and the pump has been planned quite well. Even though the pump has a minimal amount of RGB lit areas, but that does reflect in the price to some extent also. So yeah, you are getting less of RGB and you are also going to pay less for the AIO in the end. Well, it's winter here and the ambient temperature was around 20 degrees Celsius when I did these tests. And to my surprise, the 240mm AIO performed pretty close to the 360mm AIO. The difference between the delta temperatures was a mere 0.1 to 0.5 degrees Celsius, which really isn't anything to note, to be honest. Of course, considering that my room isn't climate control or anything. But yeah, looking at these results, the TH240 really does put the TH360 in a bad light here. The max temperatures during the test came pretty close to each other yet again and clearly the 175W and 200W temperatures won't look good in summers. In a quick shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark test, the average and max temperatures, well they again came pretty close to each other on both of these AIOs on the same chip at stock settings. So I would say both of these AIOs will be pretty good for a processor which can eat up to let's say 150 or even 160 watts of power. So definitely the Ryzen 7s and the Intel i7s can be paired with any of these AIOs. And again coming on to that point that if they could have paired better fans uh, with the TH360 uh, as it's obviously a more expensive AIO then I think it would have fared uh, better in this comparison but it is what it is. Well the fans do get slightly audible at full speeds uh, if you sit in a room which is dead silent. Here's a quick test of both. The ASUS Armory Create software could easily control and manage the lighting on both of the AIOs without any hassle. But for some weird reason on the TH360, the pump didn't light up with all the three fans. But when I shoveled the connectors on the cable, the pump lit up. But then one of the fans on the radiator didn't light up. 
So yeah, this is an issue which I have faced on the TH360, but of course, no such issues was there on the TH240. But with the RGB controller, everything lit up. So I am not sure if the ARGB header on my motherboard is faulty uh, or the ASUS software needs a reset or something. So yeah, the TH240 clearly takes the crown here if you are contemplating any two of these AIOs. I mean, it's smaller and cheaper and as good as the TH360. So unless you already have a huge case which can look better occupied with the 360mm AIO inside of it, well until then I really don't see a reason to get the TH360 uh, unless that minor difference of 0.2 to 0.5 degree Celsius really matters to you for some reason. But they have definitely done a great job with this white paint job finish over both of these AIOs. So if you're planning a white build, then you can definitely consider either of these options. So yeah, I hope this comparative review helped you in any sort of way. And I will definitely make sure to post the affiliate links in the description below. So you can keep buying and I can keep earning. You can also hop onto a Discord server for more chit chat on relevant content. Stay safe humans. That's all for today. Mewbot, out, out. These two thumbs aren't the two AIOs I just compared. That is the worst one. <laughs>